Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rempai mini game tutorials. And as usual, I would like to thank all of my patrons who are supporting the channel to help it keep going. So thank you so much, it is very helpful and also very appreciated. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a reflex based mini game in Rempai where the goal is to try to hit buttons, the lights up, as fast as possible before the time is up. Once the player has pressed a button that has lit up, they get a specific amount of points, and therefore the faster you press the buttons as they light up, the higher score you will get. Once the time is up, a screen is shown to the user where they can see the final score and then choose to play again or quit the game. In order to follow along with the tutorial, you're going to need a fresh bumper project in the size 1920 x 1080 pixels using the latest version of the Rampai engine. You're also going to need the image assets for the tutorial, which you can download from the description box below. It is good if you have at least some basic knowledge in Python programming to understand the coding a little bit better, but you might still find it interesting and useful either way. And the complete script for this tutorial can be downloaded by my patrons in the tier supporter or higher, and a link to it is in the description box below. With that said, let's have a look at the code for this minigame. So here I have the script file open in the Atom editor. And the first thing you want to make sure of is that you have moved all of the images into the images folder of your project so that you can use them throughout the coding. As usual, we'll first have a look at the necessary global variables we're going to need. And I have defined these at the bottom of the script, just above the start label. The first variable that is defined here is called button states and is a list variable that will be filled later on with the two different states that a button can be in. Each entry in this list will represent a state of a button and will have the value idle or lit. This way we can keep track of which button should be lit or unlit. The next variable is called buttons and should be set to the number of buttons that you want to have displayed on the screen. You can set this to whatever number you want of course, but I recommend an even number so you can have a certain number of rows with equal number of buttons. This variable will be used later on to generate the correct amount of values for the lists that we have and also to place the correct amount of buttons in the game. Then we have random button indexes, which is another list variable that will be filled later on with six values, in this case, according to the buttons variable. Each value will be a randomly picked number from zero to five that we can then use to pick a button with from the button states list. Then we can set the state of the button that was picked to the value lit so that it can light up. Next, we have a variable named current button index, which will be set to the index value of a button that is currently lit up. This is used to keep track of which button we need to light up next, depending on which one was lit up previously. We also have a score variable that simply keeps track of the player's score as they are playing the game. The playtime variable is essentially a countdown timer value that is used for the countdown timer inside of the minigame and you want to set this to the number of seconds that the timer should count down for. The last variable, named initial countdown, is also a countdown timer value that should be set to the amount of seconds that the initial countdown for the minigame should go for. This is the countdown timer that is shown to the player before the game actually starts to help the player get prepared. Now that we know the variables that we need, we're going to have a look at the start label below. Here we can see that the first thing that we do is to call a custom Python function named setup reflex game. This function sets the minigame up so it will be ready to be played, and after that we call the minigame screen called reflex minigame. So every time you want the minigame to show to the player, you first set it up by using the setup reflex game function, and then show the screen where the minigame displayables are added. Let's have a look at this custom function next. In this function, we have a for loop that runs as many times as defined with the buttons variable. And inside this loop, we add or append the value idle to the button states list variable. Since this loop will run six times, the list will be filled six times with the value idle. This represents the six buttons we want to have in the game, which should be idle at the very start. After the loop is done, we want to generate a random list of index values from zero to five that will be used later on to pick a button from the button states list so that we can set its value to lit instead of idle. So every time this function runs, a new random list will be generated so that the pattern of buttons that will light up is going to be different. 
For this, we use a Python function called sample, which is a part of the Uvanda module instead of Python. In this case, we create a new list using the range function in Python and supply the buttons variable, as this will create a list with six values starting at zero and ending in five. Then we also need to specify how many random values we want to generate into this new list, and that is done with the parameter called k. In this case, I have specified that I want six random values, but you could also set this to a higher number if you want. We're going to later on generate a new list once all of the buttons in this list has been lit up, but if you put this to a higher number instead, it might not be necessary to do if the countdown timer is relatively short. In order to use the sample function from Python, you're going to need to input the random module at the top of the init Python block. To do that, you write import and then random. Now that we know how the setup function for the minigame works, let's have a look at the minigame screen. In this screen, we first have an on display rule that runs an action after the screen is shown. Here we make sure to show another screen named countdown timer that contains the initial countdown before the minigame starts, which we'll have a look at soon. Then we add the background for the minigame with a normal image display ball. After that, we have a grid display ball. Since we have an even number of buttons, we can split these into an even amount of rows. For that, I have chosen to set the columns of the grid to buttons divided by 2, which in this case creates 3 columns, as 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then we need another row of 3 buttons to make 6 in total, so we set this grid to use 2 rows. Then we position the grid where we want it in the game, and set how much spacing should be between each button, which in this case is 100. Then to create each of the buttons, we can use a for loop instead of having to manually write each button display ball ourselves. We want this for loop to run the amount of times specified in the buttons variable, so we add buttons instead of the range function. As you might remember me saying before, by using the range function, you will get a list in return. So this for loop will therefore loop through a list containing six items starting at zero and ending in five. Then the i variable that is for this for loop specifically will contain the value in the list corresponding to the current iteration of the loop. So if this is the first iteration or run of the loop, then the i variable will be equal to zero, in the second run it will be one, and so on. Now to add the buttons to the screen, we can use an image button that will allow the player to click on it and trigger something to happen. This image button won't have any hover state, so we just specify an idle image. Since the button can be lit or idle, we want to make sure we pick the correct image from the images folder, and since each button's state is listed in the button states list, we can use it to determine which version of the button image to use. Each button image starts with the word button, followed by either idle or lit, and then ends in .png. So to construct the correct image name, we use string interpolation. So after the word button, we add percent %s, followed by .png. The percent %s needs to be replaced with something, so for that we add a percent after the string, and then we pick the state of the button by referring to the button states list. To pick the correct value from the list to replace the percent %s with, we refer to the i variable for this full loop. So if this is the first iteration of the loop, then the i variable is going to be zero, and therefore we're picking the first item from the list. Then we set the focus mask to true, and set the action to run a custom Python function named reflex game B press, where B press stands for button press. This function will check if this button is lit or idle as the player pressed it. If it's lit, then it will add points to the score and then set it back to idle. We need to also tell the function which button that was pressed, so for this we supply it with a parameter that I have named btn, which stands for button, and is set to the value of the i variable. And we'll have a look at this function a little bit later. Next, we have two simple text display balls, which will show the player score and the time they have left. For this, we can use two square brackets inside the string together with the variable name, which will be replaced with the value that the variable contains in game. The last two things we have in this screen are two timers. The first timer will run an action every millisecond to make a button light up by calling a custom function named light button. But we only want it to run if there isn't already a button that is lit up. To make sure it does that, we create an if statement that checks if the button states list does not contain the value lit and then we put the timer into that statement block. At the start of the game, all buttons are idle, so this timer will therefore run when this screen is shown.
then we'll need timer's action runs and sets a button to lit. This if statement will prevent this timer from running until the button is unlit again. But we also want the timer to only run as long as the initial countdown timer has finished as well. So for that, we have another if statement above the other one that checks if the screen countdown timer is not shown. We use a run by Python function named getScreen to check if this is true. Inside of that if statement, but outside of the other if statement, we have another timer. This timer is the actual minigame countdown timer, which controls how long the player can play the game for. It should only run when the countdown timer screen is not showing, which is why we put it in the first statement block. This timer will subtract 1 from the playtime variable every second, but only if the variable is more than 1. We do that by using an if action that checks if the playtime variable is more than 1, and if it is, then we use the set variable action to subtract 1 from the variable. But if it's not true, then that means that the timer has run out and we show a game over screen called reflex minigame over. We also set this to repeat as long as the playtime variable is more than 1 as we don't want it to keep running otherwise. Let's have a look at the countdown timer screen next that shows the initial countdown timer. In this screen, we have a frame displayable containing the countdown timer text. I have set it to have a transparent black color as the background and made sure it fills the entire screen with the xfill and yfill properties. The text displayable uses the initial countdown variable in the string which will be replaced in game with the current value of the variable. I made this text quite large to be extra visible and aligned it in the center of the screen. Then we have the timer displayable which will make the countdown timer variable subtract with 1 every time it runs and this is done the same way as we did the timer for the minigame screen. Now, let's have a look at the reflex game B press function I talked about earlier that runs when the player presses on one of the buttons. As you can see, this function is pretty simple and only really does two things. First of all, in the BTN parameter, we have the index value of the button that the player pressed. This index value we use to pick the correct item from the button states list, which represents a button to set the value of it to idle. That's because after the player presses on a lit button, we want it to go back to idle so we can light up another button instead. So to do that, we use the btn parameter in the two square brackets, like so, and say that the value residing in the list at that index position should be equal to idle. We also add 1 to the score because now the player has clicked on the correct button. To change the score variable's value, we need to declare it as a global, which we do at the top of the function. But since this button that the player pressed could technically be a button that wasn't lit, then we need to make sure that this is actually the lit button before we give them points. So for that, we create an if statement that checks if the button that resides at the index value of btn in the button states list has the value lit. So that's it for the button press function. Now let's have a look at the action, the lights up button, that we set to run with the timer in the reflex minigame screen. So here we have the light button function that runs every millisecond as long as there isn't a button already lit. What that essentially means is that the function only runs once at a time because as soon as it runs, a button is set to lit, preventing the function from running immediately again. In this function, we want to make sure that a random button will be lit up. Since we have filled the random button indexes list with numbers corresponding to different buttons in the button states list, we want to refer to it to pick the correct button. For that, we have this last line right here that sets a randomly picked button in the button states list and sets its value to lit. We do that by first grabbing the correct random button index from the random button indexes list using the current button index variable. So let's say that this function runs for the first time. Then that means that this current button index variable is equal to zero. And by adding zero inside the two square brackets of the random button indexes list, we grab the first item in that list. Now let's say that the first value in this list is the number 2. Then that means that this random button index variable will now be equal to 2. Next, we use this number as another index value to grab an item from the button states list. Since in this example the number is 2, then that means that we grab the third item in the list. Then we set this third item in the list to be equal to the value lit. 
Now we just need to make sure that the next time this function runs, we can grab the next value from the random button indexes list to be able to light up the next button. For that, we have this if and else statements above. The first if statement checks if the current button index variable is less than button minus one. Since we know at the first run of this function, the current button index variable is zero, then this if statement will be true. So then we add one to the current button index variable. This will continue until the variable is equal to five, because when it is, then we have the last index value, which will pick the last item in the random button indexes list. The next time the function runs after the variable has reached five, the else statement will run instead, which will reset the variable back to zero. And then we generate new random values for the random button indexes list, so we can have a new random pattern of buttons to light up. This is just so that the game doesn't keep going through the same list of buttons over and over again until the time is up. And since we want to assign a new list of random numbers to the variable, we need to declare it as a global, which we do at the top of the function. Now let's go back into the minigame screen and have a look again. Since we set the third item in the button states list in this example to be equal to lit, then that means that the image used for the third image button in this for loop is going to be the lit one. So now that we know how that works, Let's have a look at the game over screen that I have named Reflex Minigame Over and will be shown when the minigame timer has run out. Here we can see that we have a frame with a transparent black background color that takes up the entire screen. Then we have another frame inside of that that contains a background image of a pop-up window as well as the player score for that game and a play again and quit button. The play again button simply hides the screen when pressed and also runs another custom function that resets the minigame so it can be played again. The quick button doesn't have any specific action as it will be dependent on where you want to take your player when they finish the minigame. Here you could for example jump to a label that continues the story of your game. So now let's have a look at the last thing for the script which is the reset function that resets the game. In this function we reset some of the variables back to their initial values. The ones we need to reset will be the initial countdown variable, because it was counted down to zero, we now need it to start over from 3 seconds again. We also need to reset the playtime variable, so it can be used again for the minigame timer, and the score of course needs to be reset back to zero. The buttons also need to be reset back to idle, in case one of them managed to light up just as the time ran out. We do that with a full loop that goes through each value in the button states list and sets them to idle. The last thing we need to do is to reshow the countdown timer to prepare the player to play the game again. And that's actually it for the code of this minigame. To put this script into your game, a tip is to create a new file for it in your project that will sit amongst the other files. You can call it, for example, reflexminigame.rpy and then put all of the code in there, except for the start label of course. Then you should be able to use it in your main script file as I demonstrated earlier, where you first call the setup function and then show the minigame screen. If you liked this tutorial, it would be highly appreciated if you pressed the like button and left a comment down below to let me know. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.